There's the lovely tone that we get from our sweet friend at Zoom. Um, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Sunny Brown, and I'm Assistant Director with the Ole Miss Alumni Association. And we have been holding our upfront virtual talks with UM experts for the last um, fall and now spring semester. And we are very fortunate that the School of Education and Macy have joined us today to talk about developments in the Department of Higher Education, which I'm excited to hear about. I'm also a graduate of the higher ed department, so I know that we will be in for a treat today. Um, just a little Zoom, I guess, manners. Uh, please stay on mute. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the chat. Um, we will take them as we go, and Macy will definitely get to all of your questions for sure before we run out of time. Um, about an hour today, so just sit back, relax, and enjoy, and feel free to drop any questions in the chat again. Um, at this time, I'd like to introduce you to Macy Edmondson. She's a clinical pro assistant professor and the graduate program co coordinator for the Department of Higher Education in the School of Education here on campus at Ole Miss. Before joining the Department of Higher Education, she served as the Assistant Dean for students at the University of Mississippi School of Law. At the law school, she was chosen by the student body as the recipient of the Joan K. Murphy Outstanding Law Student Staff Member Memorial Award. And she also served as the co-director for the Council for Legal Education Opportunity for four years. In 2015, she was chosen as one of Mississippi's 50 leading businesswomen by the Mississippi Business Journal. And in 2016, she co-founded the National Association for Law Student Affairs Professionals and was elected as president in 2019. She also serves on the Mississippi Advisory Committee to the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. So being at Women's History Month, we've got the right girl uh, or the right woman, I guess, to present to us today on higher education. And we're so lucky to have you, Macy, and I will let you take it away. Great. Thank you so much for that fantastic introduction. I appreciate that. Um, I am going to share my screen now. I um, I created a presentation for today. Can y'all see that? Let me play it from the beginning. That would be helpful. Okay, so I am going to talk to you today about the um, updates or the recent developments in our higher education department because we do have quite a few and I am so glad that you joined in today to hear about those. Um, just so you know, uh, we have four graduate programs. That's that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot of graduate programs. Um, we have two online programs. So we have our online master's program, which has been recently approved for uh, 30 hours. Um, and this is designed more for our folks who are working, um, who uh, have some experience and education under their belt. And so they are, you know, coming to this program so that they can uh, obtain a higher degree while working. Um, we also have our EDD program, um, and that moved fully online in January. It's the first doctoral program fully online on campus. Um, and so we are very proud of that. It's also, as you might imagine, geared toward those working practitioners who are looking to further their education, um, but they are still, you know, serving a full-time capacity in their work. Um, we also have two residential programs, as you're probably aware. We have our residential master's program. Um, and I'll tell you, um, we have gained a little bit of traction internationally. We've got some international students who have been applying uh, and um, they've been fantastic students. So we're excited about that. And then we also have, of course, our, our PhD program um, and our incoming students. So the students that will start in the fall of 2021, very strong, very strong students, full-time PhD students. And we were able to get them pretty competitive assistantships to attract them here to our university. So we are very, very proud of that. The pie chart that you see there, that is based on the incoming numbers from this past academic year. 
So the online MA looks like it's huge and it is, but we accept students both in the fall and in the spring. So they have a larger number. Um, and then we have our online EDD, our residential MA, and then of course the PhD students. So what we've done so that we can kind of guide students better and have a better understanding of what's going on in each program is we created faculty directors uh, of each program. So for example, our online master's program, Dr. George McClellan oversees that program. Um, for our residential master's program, Dr. KB Miller oversees it. Online EDD, Dr. Frank Fernandez, and then Dr. Neil Hutchins, and I should have corrected the slide because he's a co-chair with Dr. Amy Wells Dolan, and they oversee our residential PhD students. You'll see that we have um, I, I included the numbers from uh, this incoming year for the number of students who came in. And then you'll see down there at the bottom, the total number of students in each program. So the online, the completely online MA is relatively new. So they had 30 incoming students, but total there's 43 folks in that program. Um, we have 44 residential master's students we have 66 online EDD students, which is a lot, um, but it takes longer, right, to finish your EDD. It takes longer to finish your PhD. So we have more students on the books um, and they're trying to complete their dissertation. So overall, we have 175 students. Um, that's huge. And we have eight faculty members uh, I think all of them have some type of administrative role as well. So I like to say we're small but mighty, like we're accomplishing a lot of good things, even though the number of faculty is small and, um, and our number of students is large. Um, I'm gonna see if this link works. We also have a new higher education minor um, this is for undergraduate students. So if there is an undergraduate student who likes working in universities um, at their institution, maybe they're involved in student government, maybe they're involved in student activities, uh, maybe they're an orientation leader and they're like, hey, I really like this. I think I'd like to get my feet wet and, and be able to work on a, on a campus. We created a higher education minor for those students who might be interested in kind of extending their, their higher education career post-graduation. So I'm gonna let you watch this video. Have you ever thought about working at a college or university? Are you a student leader in campus organizations, interested in helping shape the college student experience, or just wanting to learn about the fields of higher education and student affairs? Consider minoring in higher education. This 15 hour minor exposes undergraduate students to the work that makes college special, like admissions, student success, student activities, financial aid, academic advising, and athletics and introduces students to advanced areas of study within the field. Courses focus on issues in higher education related to history, social movements, current events, teaching and learning, student development, and policy. The minor is delivered online and works well with any major. You can begin by taking one of the courses as an elective, or you can fill out a minor application. To apply or learn more, visit higheredolemiss.edu. So that was one of our um, informational pieces. Let me make sure that stops. Hold on. Hello, and welcome to this episode of So What's New. My name is Kelly Smith-Marion, and I'm a development officer. Okay. Give me one second, I'm gonna make this work. Y'all can see all the buttons I'm pushing too, can't you? Okay, I'm gonna just do a new share. So give me one moment. Hey, 
Macy, we keep getting a white screen. Are you seeing that? Um, no, I'm trying to resume the share and it's not letting me. Ah, gotcha. It says bring your shared window to the front, which I am trying to do <laughs> um, and it's not working. Can you see that? It's still Nothing. white, but it did not change your screen share. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop share. Okay. Okay. This is a live look at the higher ed world, right? Now. It is, right? And usually I can make this work, but it is not working for me. It's not gonna do it, is it? I don't think so. Do you just wanna talk through your slides and we can go from there? Um, sure. I know that's not what you want to do, but. Yeah. Okay, well, that's what we'll do though. We'll just make, make it work. Um, I am going to stop the share. I'm gonna pull up my notes so that I can <laughs> share the information with you. I think. Okay, wait, I think I have it. All right, I th actually think I can share it with you now. You see it now? Okay, perfect. Y'all, I am sorry. Um, those were our updates for the program. I wanted to give you a little bit of uh, information about our faculty because they do so much. Um, they have been really busy this past year, the past couple of years. Um, as you might imagine with the pandemic coming and um, trying to pivot and just kind of start anew with things like technology um, and as you can see, I was, I'm still working on uh, my abilities there. And so uh, I just gonna share with you a little bit of what our faculty is doing. So Dr. Neil Hutchins, he serves as our department chair. And as I mentioned, he's the co-faculty director of the PhD program. He works very closely with our EDD and our PhD students. Um, he is a very active researcher and writer. Uh, he is the author, along with Kaplan, Lee, and Rooksby, of The Law of Higher Education. Now, if you have not seen this text, I will tell you, because I'm using it in one of my classes right now, it is the reference of all references. If you ever needed to refer to anything about anything in the law of higher ed, it's in these texts, I promise you. Um, so it's kind of amazing at how deep they get into the law, but um, it's there. And so if you ever need that type of information, please look up that particular text. Um, they are currently working on a new edition of the text, so they're always making sure that it's updated. Also, Dr. Hutchins just co-authored a text with Dr. George McClellan. It's called Shared Governance, Law and Policy in Higher Education, a Guide for Student Affairs Practitioners. Um, he also just recently presented for the Stetson Law and Higher Education Conference just this past week. So in addition to doing all of his administrative role, he is very active in researching and writing so that he's always on top of information for our students. Next, we have Dr. K.B. Malier. Um, K.B. is uh, the faculty director for the residential master's program. Um, he's very close with them. He always makes sure that he's involved. Even during the pandemic, he had optional check-in meetings with our residential students and all of them participated every week because they just like the community and they like to see their colleagues. Um, he is working on his third 
uh, he's working with the third year law student, Seth Dickinson, on a book to review um, its teacher's college record, uh, and it's about post-secondary governance. Um, he's also writing a law review article, which is Runaway College Cost, How College Coverning Boards Fail to Protect Students, um, that is going to be or that is published. And he's also preparing a presentation with Russ Willis from the University of Southern Mississippi's College of Business on updates to the Fair Labor Standards Act. Um, he's also involved in several committees on campus. And so he's been very busy. And if you know him well, you know that he's also um, playing pickleball in his free time. That's his new favorite sport. Next, we have Dr. Phyllis George. Um, she was recently named the assistant chair of our department. Um, she also received tenure and was promoted to associate professor of higher education. So we're very excited about that. She is a leader in our faculty senate and she has been recently named a member of the newest cohort of the American Council on Education, which you might be familiar with ACE. Um, their fellows program and that program identifies and, and prepares faculty, uh, faculty, staff and administration who uh, are emerging leaders and they try to prepare them for more senior leadership on campuses. So we are very excited that she is a member of the newest cohort there. Um, next we have Dr. Amy Wells Dolan. Um, she is our Associate Dean of the School of Education. So she is very busy with all things administration. Um, she's a professor. She's still teaching history of higher ed. Um, this past year, she was named Council of Delegates Chair for the Carnegie Project on the Education Doctorate, which you might have heard CPED, okay? Uh, CPED is the they have some requirements for the EDD dissertation and we follow those guidelines. So she actually serves on the chair and she's able to give us really good information for our students. Um, she also serves on the curriculum and policy and Dean's leadership team committees for the School of Education as well as other committees on campus. Next, we have Dr. George McClellan. So he is our faculty director for the online master's program. Um, he has definitely been staying busy. Uh, he's written the book that I mentioned earlier with Dr. Hutchins and I have a, a graphic of it right there so that you can see that. Um, he also uh, has been doing a lot of research and publication on esports, which is a big thing now in higher ed. Um, and last year, he was honored by NASPA with the George Koo Award for Outstanding Contributions to Literature and Research. So he's been very active. He stays um, very knowledgeable about things that are coming down the pipeline so that our students are uh, most informed on recent, uh, recent issues that might arise in their, in their profession. Next, we have Dr. Frank Fernandez. He's one of our newer faculty members. Um, he is the faculty director over our EDD program, and he's also a very active author. He has recently published an asset-based approach to advancing Latina students in STEM, increasing resilience, participation, and success. And then he's also got another text coming out in August which is Gender Equity in STEM in Higher Education, uh, International Perspectives on Policy, Institutional Culture, and Individual Choice. So he has um, been working on that as well as trying to obtain grants for other research. Um, he's an excellent uh, professor, especially in qualitative research. Um, I have some students who are working with him right now and are most appreciative of what he's able to um, relay to them in the classroom because it pertains directly with their dissertation and practice. Um, we have Whitney Webb. Whitney Webb is our Assistant Dean for Certification of Undergraduate Studies 
an assistant professor of higher education education so she has a, a bigger role with the school of education in general um, she primarily teaches research courses to our evd students um, and she serves on the curriculum and policy committee for the school of education and then there's me and y'all heard about my <laughs> uh you heard my bio at the beginning of the um at the presentation um I will say that I am very excited. I was one of the co-founders for NALSAP, so that's the National Association for Law Student Affairs Professionals. Um, we have over 600 members now, and we are currently creating core competencies for student affairs professionals in, in law schools. And so um, I have a team that is working with me, and we will create some competencies uh, for those professionals, we've been in contact with NASPA, um, with CASE, so there's a lot of good things that we're learning there. And I'm hoping to bring in some students to help me with this so that they can understand about competencies and how that works in trying to develop themselves professionally. And then finally, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our Student Personnel Association. So that is our active student association run by students. Um, they were under very good leadership this year. Um, Blair Wartsmith was the president and Kayla Von Berg was vice president. Uh, Blair actually uh, just obtained a position at the University of Florida and Kayla is going to proceed to our PhD program. So we're very excited about that. They were able to have um, several social events, um, socially dif distant social events. Uh, they were able to have several professional development events, um, including a conversation with Keith Carter. Um, so you want to pursue student affairs panel for undergraduate students. And I will say for that particular panel, they didn't put all of the information in here, but they reached out to several of our alum across the country and got very good feedback. There were several folks who participated in that panel from all over the place. So it was very um, informative and I think students got a lot out of that particular panel. Um, and then they've increased their enrollment, they've doubled participation, they've launched um, new professional development series, uh, they rebranded the organization, so they are on a roll and they are ready for next year. They've already elected new officers and they have um, some good ideas coming up the pipeline. And so hopefully we can involve some of you in those events if you're interested. So I feel like I rambled on a whole lot. Uh, I hope that you have some questions for me because I would love to hear from you uh, just in general or, or about our department. We do have a question in the chat, Macy, from Mark Rosen. Have you okay. found that with COVID all around us, enrollments for higher education, particularly on the doctoral level, have wound down? So that's an excellent question. We get that question a lot. Um, I think for this past year, we saw we maintained, right? Like we, we didn't decrease, we didn't increase, but we just kind of maintained status quo. Um, I think folks were, were unsure what to do and how to proceed with their education. Um, but for next year, we've actually had increased applications and it looks like we'll have a slight increase, especially in our PhD program, which is nice. Um, uh, we'll have an increase number of students. We don't want too many more, right? There's only eight of us, but it's it's looking good for us right now. And I hope that it continues on uh, into the future. Uh, this is, my name is Deborah Cooper. Uh, my question is, is it too late for the EDD program? Is it too late to enroll? So um, for fall, right, for fall 2021, um, the, the deadline, the priority deadline was March the 1st. So we just had those round of applications go through. I think that if you, um, like if you could get your materials in pretty quickly, they would still look at your application. Okay. Um, 
just so you know, we still require the GRE uh, for our doctoral programs, but we've eliminated that requirement for our master's programs. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you. Another question, is there plans to increase faculty members in the higher education department? Um, I hope so. <laughs> um, I do think that we are, um, you know, looking to increase faculty at least a little bit, right, to help alleviate um, at least a, a lot of the administrative pieces and to help teach with classes. Um, we just want to make sure our students get the, the individual care that they need. When you have that many doctoral students, um, it's, not, it's not like your regular undergraduate student. You know, you have to spend a lot of time with them, help them with writing, help them with research, help them with structuring their um, dissertation. So it's a little bit more time intensive for those doctoral students. So we're, you know, hopefully in the future, there will be a few more few more of us to go around. And we have another one for Mr. Rosen, not to put you on the spot, but how has placement on the master's and doctoral level been going within Mississippi and then with, uh, with outside of Mississippi? I can't even read today. So it's been, um, that's a great question. Uh, just so you know, let me preface this. This is my first year working in the program. Um, I just started in August, um, nothing like starting a new job in a pandemic, uh, but it's been great. <laughs> I love all of the people that I work with. So I don't have a whole lot to compare it to, but I do know that I've talked to some students. It is slowed down. I think that last year at this time, more of our students had positions than not. Um, uh, I think that students too are staying a little bit closer to home. Um, until things open back up. So we've got those two things going on. Um, I'm hoping that the, uh, I mean, as, just to give you an example, I thought that our graduate assistant positions would decrease. I thought that we would not have as many of those available. They increased this year. We had several. We have more graduate assistantship positions available than we do students coming in. So I hope that's a good sign um, for employment in general and, um, and that our students are able to get uh, those positions that, that they need once they graduate. With our EDD students, most of those folks are already working. Um, so uh, it's really our PhD students, um, we've had three of those just get brand new jobs in the past semester, this past spring. So they're doing pretty well. So it's more of our, our master's folks that we're, that we're working on placing. And I might add, we have um, a rare number of chief diversity officers that are emerging from our program. So we're hoping that we can do some type of speaker event or panel on that for you in the future. We'll definitely keep you posted on that because um, we have, we're, we're thrilled that we have that many uh, diversity officers um, coming out of our, our program and landing positions. Um, I don't see any more questions from the chat. I'll ask one more. Yeah. Um, and then if anybody thinks of anything, we can go from there. But where do you see this higher ed program in five years? Like, wh ideally, where do you see it? With more in more people enrolled, more faculty members? I mean, where, where do you see this going? Um, again, I have to preface everything with I'm the new one, right? I'm the new one on board. <laughs> So this is just what I'm hearing from other people. Uh, but I hope that the number of uh, faculty increases. I hope we are, we are able to increase um, students into our programs because that just means more accessibility. Um, I know we are particularly interested in recruiting students from Mississippi institutions, including those HBCU institutions that we serve. Um, and uh, 
We do have a few other developments coming up the pipeline, but it has not yet been approved. So I can't, I can't really mention what that is, but I, I think that it will, it will lead to an increase in either faculty, students, or both. We do have another one. Uh, being that the master's program has decreased the numbers of hours within the last year, will there be any possibility that the PhD program may consider decreasing hours anytime soon? <laughs> um, that's a great question. <laughs> so um, we decreased the number of hours in the online master's program to 30, and that is because uh, we are looking for students who have education experience under their belt. If they don't, they're gonna come in and be a little bit confused. Whereas our residential program is set up for those folks who are very new to the field and um, are starting from scratch, that still is a 36 hour program. Um, so I don't see that our EDD or our um, PhD uh, hours decreasing. Uh, I think our EDD is pretty solid. Like it's been, uh, it's been looked at and researched. And so I think the hours there are, are perfect for a doctoral program. Um, and it really just depends on the student how many it's EDHE 797, those are the dissertation classes. It just depends on how many 797s the student wants to take to complete their, their uh, dissertation in the end. Technically, you're supposed to be able to, to finish it in, in three years if you keep up with it every year from inception. But when you do that, you pretty much have to come in with an idea of what it is that you wanna research like a, a pretty solid idea. <laughs> um, could you differentiate the subject matter, the di differentiate the subject matter between the EDD and the PhD programs? Yes, sure. So for our EDD program, um, we have, so both programs require uh, your research basics, right? Quantitative um, stats, qualitative research, um, and there might even be a few special topics in there about, um, about uh, you know, narrow, narrow pieces of research, like how to do a case study or, or something like that. Um, so both programs share that. Um, the difference is in our EDD courses, there is more, the courses lend themselves to be more practitioner based, whereas the um, PhD courses or, are more research based. So for example, a PhD student could actually take my law and higher ed class, and that's for a master's student. But what they'll have to do, in addition to the work that I assign to members of that class, there are additional layers that they would have to complete. Um, I'll, I'll meet with them uh, separately to go over more in-depth pieces of law. And then they would also have some type of research component that my master's students would not. Like they'll get into the weeds on research so that they know, um, you know, they know how that process works, what that looks like and what professors are expecting. Um, they also have uh, more of an opportunity to teach if they wanted to, so to be a TA, because essentially a, a lot of PhD students, that's what the ultimate goal is, right? To be a faculty member. And for our EDD students, um, they are already working. They just might want to progress in their career um, and the dissertation and practice, that's what that's built for, is to kind of identify a challenge that's going on in, the, in their career or in their profession that they want to work on um, and how they would address that and what it looks like on the other side of that. So um, it's, it's very interesting. I love the topics this year that our ADD students have. Um, they are really looking inward to see what they can change, what they can research, and then how it can be applicable 
both at their work and then hopefully generally to other places. I'd like to share with you about our, our we have a new international student this year. Um, she is from Nigeria. And I have the pleasure of teaching her for one of her classes. Um, she is so pleasant. She is very, very smart. Um, and she has told me over and over again, like how much she has enjoyed the program but how different it is from Nigerian higher education system. A lot of it looks really similar. Like it's the same, you have departments set up on campuses, um, you have some of the same resources that are available. Um, but one of the big differences is uh, almost all of our campuses you can find at any university, a student affairs or student services department, right? Dean of students, what have you, somebody to help the students. And in Nigeria, she said that piece is, is not really there. They don't have a, a, a student services umbrella. So we've been exploring that a lot. I thought that was interesting. Um, so, you know, I hope that we do get some more uh, diverse folks in the program, because when you share these different perspectives and, and ideas, it just makes students really talk to each other and and figure out how to how to make things better thinking outside of the box. Anybody else have any questions? I will tell you it's pretty quiet in Guyton. Um, we do have some uh, in person classes, but not that many. Um, and then when we are in our offices, we can go to our offices, but when we're in there, uh, we have to shut the door if we're not wearing our masks, right? And then, um, I mean, you can open your door, but then you have to wear your mask. So uh, you see a lot of shut doors, <laughs> as you might imagine. Um, but we're excited for, you know, for things to get back to normal when they can. Uh, we're hoping that the vaccine is offered to our students here soon. Um, we planned fall like normal, so um, we're hoping that, uh, you know, we see more faces come fall. Including with our alumni, we'd love to have an event with you too. Well, Macy, thank you so much for spending the afternoon with us. I think a lot of us got a lot of really great information and it was great to hear um, what's going on in the Department of Higher Ed. And hopefully people will take this and maybe join an EDD program or yeah. a PhD program, master's program, so many options. Um, but we really appreciate it. If anybody needs anything, feel free to reach out to me or Macy. I can put you in touch. Um, my email is probably the easiest. It's just sunny at olemiss.edu, and then I can put you in touch with Macy. But other than that, we'll wrap up today's session, and everyone have a great day. Great. Thank you so much. It was good to see everybody. Bye, and thank y'all.